right, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, my name is Larkin Green, and I work for VetTech. For those of some of you know that, for those of you that don't know that, I work for VetTech. And uh, I'm not a practicing farrier, but I do a lot of farrier work. And um, I'm in kind of a unique position in that I get to work with uh, farriers and, and hoof care specialists at every level, uh, from Wyoming to Japan, British Columbia to Saskatchewan. Uh, I see a lot of different breeds, different disciplines, different environments. And so it really kind of gives me a, a fairly unique perspective on um, you know, the craft that we all um, have chosen as our profession. So you can't talk about boots without talking about barefoot. And a lot of people associate the two. And, and what I'm hoping to do is, is break that association. Um, if you're a farrier, um, you really need to alter your reaction to barefoot. Um, and I know that that's a hard thing to do. You know, some people believe in barefoot. I'm not a particular proponent of barefoot. I'm not a proponent of shoes. You know, I'm a proponent of whatever device works for that horse at the particular time and based on the environment and, and what that horse is being used for. So, you know, you kind of play both sides of the fence, but one of the things I see more than anything is the hostile reaction to, to barefoot. And um, it's understandable, but um, the one thing that you don't want to do is answer ignor ignorance with hostility. And, you know, there's ignorance on, on every side of, of what we do. So, um, but, but answering it with hostility will cost you customers and you will lose every single time. So we're all in the business of customer service. And, you know, hostility is often born out of ignorance. But even when it's not, uh, that's the way it's viewed. And so you will never, ever win um, with a hostile attitude. It's, it's just the, the killer. Um, so what you have to do is be able to de deliver education. And unfortunately, it's, it's a burden of ours now as hoof care professionals to educate customers. That's a burden that we have because there are very few true horse people anymore. Um, there's, there's a lot of people with horses that, that need education. And where are they going to go to get it? They're going to go to the internet, uh, their trainer, their friends. Um, and so it should be the hoof care specialist should provide as much education as possible, but you got to deliver it in a calm manner. Um, and that sometimes takes time, unfortunately, but it, it, it's really the way to go. So complainers never complain to clients. Um, nobody likes complainers, and it's, it's, it doesn't really serve a purpose. Um, and you will lose clients if you complain. And a lot of people complain about other clients to existing clients which is, again, the, the kiss of death. So don't let these two you know, attitudes uh, take business away from, me, from you. So the other thing that, you, that I do is, I, first of all, I try not to use the word barefoot or natural. To, those, to me, those terms really don't apply. Natural, I, I talk about what's normal for, for that horse in his present environment or his present, present um, condition. Because sometimes they're in an environment they can't get out of. The owner's not willing to, to change that. So you have to deal with that. So that's what's normal for that horse. But is it natural? Absolutely not. Um, barefoot, I always try to use unshod or better yet, unprotected. Unprotected is a very powerful word um, because I don't care how good your barefoot horse is. If you ask somebody, are you going to ride that horse unprotected? It really makes them think because uh, all it takes is one wrong step and your, your great barefoot horse is now lame. So um, unprotected is a pretty powerful word. The other thing that I try and do is I try and learn veterinary terms. Um, when I'm talking to an owner um, and I'm talking about their horse that has a valgus knee, I tell them, you know, the knee's going that way. I don't, I don't use valgus and varus and, and veterinary terms. But when you're talking to a vet, it really helps you, your communication level, not only your understanding, but it helps your credibility when you use those terms. And so communication is super important. The words that you use are super important. Um, because they convey not only your education, but your ability to communicate ideas. So a boot is just a device. It's no smarter or dumber than a keg shoe. And there's a lot to choose from out there. Um, and there's, there's not very many companies that are into it, but there's, there's a lot of choices that you have. And so it takes a fair amount of research to, to try and um, you know, wade through everything that is available and decide what's going to be good for your clients. You know, some are better than others, and you really have to do a fair amount of research to figure out what's going to work best in your practice. But there's enough out there to where um, you, know, you shouldn't have a trouble finding 
a device that's going to work. But we've got to separate the device from the movement. Um, you know, a, a, a boot is a viable device that you should be able to use in your practice. So every device that we apply in this industry boils down to two things, proper application and duration. And if you address those things to the best of your ability, you can, you can put almost anything on. I've, I've actually glued on, you know, truck tires cut out in the shape of a horseshoe. Um, I know a guy that's, that's glued the top of a Foster's beer can onto a pony that needed an extension. Um, you know, it only lasted for a week, but it worked in that situation. So you really don't want to close your mind to, to what the possibilities are because there's, there's a lot. So why are boots popular? Um, the reality is, is you know, our, the horse culture is changing and many horse owners simply want a removable device that they can put on their horse that'll stay on, provide protection and support that they can go on trail rides with. And it doesn't matter what their philosophy is, whether they you know, call themselves barefoot, they still need a protective device when they ride. And, and a lot of horses are standing around for five or six weeks, so why should they stand around in shoes when they could be standing around barefoot and then you know, have something applied when they're gonna ride? So that's, that's not too unreasonable. So if you can accept that, it just comes down to who's going to provide that, who's going to adjust and fit it, and who's going to make money from it. Is it going to be you or is it going to be somebody else? So the real reason that, I, that I'm giving this lecture is because I want to show you how to make uh, this service a profit center. Profit center is something that you can make money at because it's a service that you offer that an owner doesn't want to do or doesn't have the skill to do themselves. And so how you, how you develop that is first you have to create, you have to identify an area of need. And we, everybody lives in different areas. Some of us live in urban areas, some of us live in the country, but you need to learn what is changing in your area. Are there a lot of you know, pet horses? Or are horses really being used in work? Um, and so that helps you identify what are the needs of those customers. And then you have to decide on you know, what knowledge do you need, what skills do you need to develop in order to offer that as a service to the customer. And then you create a strategy for how to go out and get those customers. So that's, what, that's how you build a profit center. The limitations of boots, we're all pretty familiar with the limitations of boots. Poor fit is the number one. Um, gaps, gaps usually lead to movement. Movement leads to rubbing and you know, ultimately failure. Um, you've also got closures, closure systems, and we've got everything from um, you know, buckles and, and cables, and in, in this situation of this easy boot, some of you have used this, you know that one, one notch on that buckle is too tight, but the next notch is too loose. So what do you, you, know, what do, you do about that? There's, there's not a lot you can do about it, and, and all these companies have come up with various devices for keeping boots on, and um, you know, some of them combine cables and industrial Velcro, and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, three companies have also, uh, if you were at the, the hands-on clinic today for vet tech, you saw um, some glue-ons as an alternative. And there are three companies that are, are sort of in this fight. Easy Care, Renegade, which is also Lander Industries, um, and Stride Equus, which is a Canadian company. These three companies actually offer pretty good products. They're pretty progressive. I think probably Easy Care is the most progressive as far as constantly trying to improve their boots and, uh, and what they do. And so um, this is an alternative, but glue-ons obviously have a, limited, uh, a limitation in themselves in that you don't necessarily want to encase the, the foot in rubber for you know, five or six weeks. Um, so that, that has a limitation. Um, but this is the biggest thing that I see in boots is that they're generally short on heel support. When you put that boot on, you wish that boot was an eighth inch longer in the heels or maybe a quarter inch longer. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about this one in, in a minute, but um, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty universal in boots. They're very often too short. And if they're, if they're, if they're too short now, what are they gonna be in, in two weeks from now? Um, it's gonna continually run forward and it's gonna be even shorter. And that's what leads to, to injury. So this is like, uh, you know, it's like wearing your boots with no socks. Your feet are going to sweat. It's the same kind of thing. So there's a limited life to, to this type of application, but it still 
has a pretty good application for um, people that want to go on pack trips, you know, uh, you know, weekend of trail riding, and um, and endurance events. That's where it's used mostly. But boots can be modified, and that's the good news. Um, you know, we modify everything else under the sun, so why not boots? So some of the things that we can do are we can adjust the toe, we can add. Um, material to adjust for poor fit. We can add heel support, cushion. In other words, we can customize a boot, not only for that horse, but for that, for each individual foot, and reliably have that be not only supported, but stay on, okay? And the idea is you offer this as a service and you make money. So toe modifications are actually pretty easy. Most boots have enough material in them to where you can rasp, break over, if you want to improve breakover, you can rasp it right into the boot, make quick adjustments that way. Um, floor support, you know, most boots are pretty hard in the floor, and unless they have a really good frog, um, you know, it's basically like standing on, on a hard floor, and so there's not a lot of support there. But you can use something like this, which is dental impression material. You knead it together, you pack it into the foot, and what's important is you let them stand on it while it sets. Um, that's really important because if you don't, if, you, if you're holding it up while that sets, you're going to create sole pressure. So stand, let them stand on it, and it molds to the foot. It doesn't bond, so you can you, you can remove it. Um, this is actually what we saw, what some of you saw at the at the hands-on clinic today. This has been the single greatest way to improve the fit of a boot that I've seen so far. So on the on a level surface, you flow about a quarter of an inch of liquid urethane. In the bottom of that boot, you let it set for 30 or 40 seconds. You throw a little dirt on it um, so it's not tacky. And then you put the foot in it, and you let that horse stand in there for about 10 minutes. And what it does is it makes a, an impression of the bottom of their foot, but it doesn't bond to it. It remains in the boot, and that alone will dramatically improve the fit of a boot, especially the, sh the side shift that a lot of boots, even good-fitting boots, there's generally some side shift. And, and that's what causes rubbing. And so you can control that just with this application. After a couple months, if it gets dirty or it starts to get firmer, you just peel it out of the boot and you replace it. So it's a, it's a pretty easy fix. It doesn't cost a lot of money, um, but you can charge for it. The other thing is gaps. We see a lot of gaps, especially in the toe quarters, where a boot just doesn't fit. You can press on it and, and there's airspace in there. So the easy way to fix that is you can actually smear a very thin layer of Vaseline on the foot in that area, put the boot on, and then you can either inject uh, soft urethane to fill that space, or you can actually do it with, the, with uh, adhesive, acrylic adhesive. You can spread it inside the boot and then dremel it or, or, or sand it in order to you know, get it fit. This is a little bit easier because um, the boot's on the foot and it's going to fill any area that's where there's airspace. And then that stays in the boot. And if you mark that boot, which most um, people do, they mark that boot for the particular foot that it goes on, that, that customization will last the life of that boot as long as they continue to trim the foot and the foot stays the same, same way. So the other thing is adding heel support. Um, I find that most boots are short, as I said. And so you can actually add adhesive. You can add length to them using a couple different methods. So this one, basically use the magic marker to kind of um, to kind of outline the area where I wanted to build it. Use a shallow drill bit to, to drill some holes in there. Wire brush it clean. I even use the edge of a rasp to you know, add some surface area, rasp some grooves in there. The duct tape is a dam. And then in this case, we used um, Soul Guard, black uh, liquid urethane. And it sets pretty firm, like a you know, car tire, um, and float it on there. Once it's set, trim it, nip it. You can rasp grooves into it for traction, and effectively add support to a boot that would otherwise be short. And you can do that to whatever degree you want to do it. Now, this is you know this what I'm showing here is of course a glue-on shell, but you can do this to any boot that you want, whether it's a, a glue-on or a, a strap-on boot. You can also use uh, acrylics like Equilox if you like to uh, mix and, and spread. You can do the same thing in this particular case. We wanted to wedge up that boot a little bit to provide a little elevation. And so we just spread the adhesive on there and uh, same thing. So boots are 
pretty easy to modify, a lot more than more so than you think. So this particular case, this is a you know, typical underrun heel, long toe, and this horse could not be nailed to, um, not only because it couldn't take the concussion of nailing, but there was nothing to nail to. And so, and the horse also wouldn't stand for more than about a minute. So a glue on shoe was, was gonna be pretty tough as well. So this is what the owner wanted. But when we put the boot on the, on the foot, you can see, I mean, it's way short and that's really gonna create some, some, uh, some problems. So we wanted to move that back. So I decided to cut the, the front of the boot open and so I could set it back and the toes sticking through the front of the boot, but smear a little Vaseline on that. So that, that's where it ended up. Still a little short, but it was better. And so Vaseline the, the wall, sand the, uh, the boot, and we rebuild the front of the boot. So that's a pretty, pretty quick and easy modification that you can do, uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time, but it really makes a huge difference on, you know, how well these things stay on. So as things change in the, in the industry, especially in your area, you need to adapt to meet the needs of your customers or you're gonna have fewer customers. Um, a boot is a temporary device that some customers want. And um, if you're willing to investigate and, and build a little knowledge, uh, you can make money doing this. There's an old saying, give the customer what they want or they'll find somebody that will. And that's very true in this industry. Um, I'm sure most of you are somewhat familiar with that. Um, and again, the education is, is sort of a burden that, that we all face because uh, there's a lot of lack of information out there. And so you've got to educate your customers on what's best for their horse, whether it be shoes, boots, um, adhesive, uh, whatever's out there. So the biggest problem is most people don't want to carry a lot of boots. I mean, you can carry a ton of boots and, and still not have enough. Most people don't want to be in the business of selling boots, although you can do that. But what I've seen um, successful um, hoof care specialists do is they carry about 10 to 12 boots, a selection after they've researched what they think are the best boots out there. They carry 10 or 12 of them in a duffel bag um, for the purposes of fitting them. And then they tell the customer, this is the boot that works and the customer goes and buys it. And then once they have it, then the, the hoof care specialist will modify that boot so it fits and it, you know it's gonna work really well for that horse. So you can really do it and, and charge for it. The whole idea is you know, adding this to your skill set and making money from it. And um, so that's what it's all about. Any questions? Yeah. Are most uh, boots sold by trainers or do you see that being common? Uh, that ranges. Um, and to be honest, I'm not really familiar, but they can be as, as low as 25 bucks a pair and as much as you know, 30 bucks a piece. Um, you know, some of the, some of the, the boots like Renegades um, are pretty expensive. But once, and that's the beauty of this, is that once you get a boot that really fits, you've modified it, they can use that boot for, you know, a fair amount of time. And so the cost really, you know, is defrayed over a longer period of time. Yeah. Yeah, the, you know, the, I, what I see in my experience is that communication is probably the, there, there's probably more lack of communication skill in our industry than anything else, than any other skill. Um, and that's why I try and focus, you know, I do a lot of lectures at the schools and I try and tell people, you've gotta be able to communicate. You've gotta, you know, expand your vocabulary and, um, and really be able to explain things. And I use a lot of pictures from some of the old books uh, from the, the turn of the century. Uh, 1900, some of those old books have incredible diagrams and using those you can explain the effects of going from you know six weeks to seven week trim cycle or, or the need for a four week trim cycle. 
Um, so communication is really huge, and, and once you get that down, um, you, can, you can really have long-lasting customers if you're willing to you know, communicate with them. So yeah, good, good experience. Any other questions? Yeah. There's a, you know, Vettec makes a number of uh, liquid pad materials. You can use any one of them. Um, I, most recently, I've been using the softest version. Um, and it's, um, I find that it really provides, you know, a nice amount of cushion and it tends to mold better because it is soft. And so it fills up the, the commissures and even flows around the edge. And so that is the best material I've found for limiting the, the shifting movement of a boot. Yeah, well, because you're, you're, you're really, you want the material to set, but you still want it to be soft enough so it makes an impression. So most of those liquid pad materials set between 30 and 60 seconds. So it's just around 30 or 40 seconds. Um, and then what's important though is because it's pretty tacky, um, you wanna be able to slide the foot in there. You throw a little dirt on there or baby powder or something and then dump it out and, and then it loses that tackiness altogether. And then you put it on the foot and, and it won't stick to the foot, but it'll, It'll sink in, and usually I, you know, make sure they're bearing weight on it. Pick up another foot. Make sure they're bearing maximum weight on it, and then uh, it makes a really nice impression that'll last a few months. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, this this one, um, you know, a lot of what I showed was <clears throat> was Easy Care because that's what I had available. Um, this is this yellow one is is made by Renegade Lander Industries, and it's also a glue-on shell. It's made of urethane, um, and they have a little different philosophy for their their boots. But that's why you you sort of have to research and figure out what you like about them and and what you what may be a, a drawback. Yeah, well, so on the glue-ons, and some of you that were at the hands-on clinic found this out, on, the, on a glue-on shoe, um, you don't want to put material in ahead of time in the floor because if when you're trying to glue on a shoe, you're gluing on that shoe and they're immediately bearing weight on it, and, and the, while the material is setting, they're standing on it. So if you've got a soft material that they're going to sink into, that works on the bond of the, uh, of the, you know, the periphery where you've glued it. So on a glue-on, you typically glue it on first, but you've pre-drilled a couple of holes on either side, and then you fill it after. You fill it with the soft stuff or something. Um, there's a number of things you can use, but you fill that after the boot is on. And that provides some cushion, but it doesn't allow them to, to sink in. That I used um, Adhere, which is a paste-like material, um, it, and it sets fairly firm. I, I, the reason I use that is because um, I could have used Soul Guard, but Soul Guard is pretty runny, and so I wanted a paste-like material. And and even though that sets pretty hard, you know, there's no movement in the toe, so it didn't really matter. Um, so yeah, that's what I used on on that. But you could use you know you could use a urethane, you could use Equilox, acrylic. Pretty much any durable adhesive will, will work on that. Okay, other questions? All right, thanks very much.